Hello, everyone, and welcome to Concordia University's Fourth Space. Thank you for joining us for today's event, Moving the Landscape to Find Ground, an artist talk with Barry Pottle. To help situate you, we are streaming to YouTube live from Concordia University's Fourth Space, which is located on unceded Indigenous lands in Chichage, Montreal. At Fourth Space, we work with our university community to mobilize knowledge by co-creating daily activities that invite Concordians together with external partners and audience members to examine research questions and projects in development here at the university. We are running this event as a live stream meeting, so we welcome your comments and questions with a raised hand or via the chat if you're joining by Zoom. For those of you in the space, if you'd like to participate, just let us know by raising a hand and we'll be sure to get a microphone to you. It is now my pleasure to hand it over to Assistant Professor at Studio Arts, Hannah Claus. Seigu sewa gwegu, Hannah Claus Yanjats. My name is Hannah Claus. Watkunuwaradu, uh, welcome here to the talk, both in person and online. We're really thrilled to have this happen. This is the third iteration of our speaker series that is happening uh, throughout the year from September through till May. Um, the uh, Moving the Landscape to Find Ground is a series built on the shared ambition to break open lens-based practices via the interrogation of the colonial prism through which photography exists. We're inviting conversation among all communities impacted by the colonial gaze. The speakers invited to the Moving the Landscape to Find Ground uh, speaker series also provide studio, studio visits to Concordia University gradu uh, graduate students. If you wish to have one of the speakers visit your studio, you may go to the post image uh, website. And uh, we're particularly happy to have Barry with us today. I just have a short bio here. Barry Pottle is an Inuk artist originally from Labrador, Rigole Nunatsiavut, now living in Ottawa, Ontario. He's interested in the medium of photography as uh, a means of artistic expression and a way of exploring the world around him. Living in Ottawa, which has the largest urban population of Inuit outside the north, uh, he's been able to stay connected to the greater Inuit community. He showcases the uniqueness of that community, whether at cultural gatherings, family outings, or within the solitude of nature that photography allows. He's able to capture the essence of Inuit life in Ottawa. Thank you, Barry. Thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction. <clears throat> Welcome, everybody. Uh, Good afternoon. My name is Barry, Barry Vunga. Uh, <clears throat> a little bit about myself. Uh, I, I do live in Ottawa. I've been in Ottawa for 30 something years. I call myself an urban Inuk these days, just out of respect, because there is a huge urban population right across Canada, uh, Inuit living in urban settings. And so I just want to re pay respect to that. Uh, trying to figure out how to start this. Yes, please. A little bit, I didn't, I'm not a professional artist. Uh, I'm all self-taught. Uh, I've done a little bit of training here and there, but I'm a self-taught artist. I have never taken any kind of uh, university courses other than uh, going to university and taking a, a BA in, in uh, Aboriginal studies, which most of my uh, credits are art history related. So this is where uh, the interest from art uh, art comes to as well. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm not a professional uh, photographer per se. I just call myself an artist. Uh, and if you look at towards a contemporary urban Inuit photography, I made that up. I just one day, very early on in this practice, I just had to call it something. Uh, I know Ryan <coughs> Ryan Rice. Uh, a former colleague of mine, he was talking in, in Happy Valley Goose Bay one day, uh, and he was talking about naming, naming your practice, naming your things. And so this is what I came up with uh, towards a contemporary urban Inuit photography. Uh, I am urban. Uh, most of all of my work is done in an urban context. Uh, I do, uh, I started out uh, doing photojournalism. Uh, a little bit about how I came to do this sort of stuff. Uh, eh, when Zellers, anybody remember Zellers? Remember when Zellers was around? Well, we used to do a lot of shopping at Zellers, my wife and, and, and I for, for our family. And we collected many, many pints over the years. And when Zellers was closing, we had to get rid of our pints. So uh, we decided to buy a ghetto blaster and a camera. So I got a 35 mil camera. So 
Well, that's where this comes into play. Uh, like I said, I had no intention of being an artist or, uh, or uh, that sort of thing. I was interested in, I was interested in writing. I wanted to, to try my hand at writing, but uh, that's a little more challenging in itself. I like poetry and I like short stories, but other than that, uh, I did uh, a bit of uh, carving, which didn't work out quite well. I can't see something in a piece of stone. Uh, I tried my hand at uh, writing, uh, uh, some drawing and some sketching uh, when I was young, but I always had an artistic mind, uh, mostly kept it to myself. But uh, so uh, in 2000, I don't know, eight, nine, I got a camera and then I started taking pictures of things around Ottawa, uh, around the local community, the Inuit community. In Ottawa, there's a, a lot of Inuit in, in, in Ottawa, a lot of Inuit in, in Ottawa, as uh, Hannah said, one of the largest communities outside the north. I question that these days. A lot of uh, Inuit moved south, so uh, I'm not quite sure the numbers these days. But I started uh, doing, uh, just taking pictures of events uh, around Ottawa and the hill, uh, around the community, uh, feast uh, parties and that sort of stuff. Just photojournalism and passing it around to people if they were interested in, in seeing the images, whether it's ITK uh, through Edicted Magazine or other magazines or the Inuit Art Foundation at the time when they were in Ottawa. So I just passed them along and shared my pictures. Uh, I'm always sharing my pictures uh, with everybody. Uh, I don't mind that. Um, but I started doing, taking pictures, uh, photojournalism, taking things around Ottawa and those sort of things, whether it's uh, Suicide Prevention Day or uh, uh, Se International Seal Day uh, or just uh, cultural events that took place throughout Ottawa throughout the year. Uh, so this is where it started, a starting point. Uh, like I said, I'm not a full-time, uh, I'm not a professional photographer. I take pictures mostly. Uh, most of my, my my experience has been out and about uh, the community, out and about Ottawa, traveling here and there in, in, in the Ottawa region, as well as uh, throughout Canada itself. I, I've been all across Canada, so I've taken pictures of, of everything around Canada, the north, uh, south, east, west, and those wonderful things. Just taking pictures. Uh, I take a lot of pictures because it's, it's, it keeps me practice, practice, practice. My motto is practice, practice, practice. So, so this is how I get to, uh, to uh, practice my, 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 uh, my art. It's going out and take pictures, uh, whether it's with my wife or my family or just me. I just take off. It doesn't matter who's with me. I just, I just take off in here. I just go because I love the land and I love just exploring by myself and being by myself. I'm what you call a homebody these days, especially with the last four or five years, especially with COVID. Uh, it's been very challenging to uh, to do things artistically, especially in, when you're amongst people and those things and and uh, everything going on with COVID and all that. Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> so if you see uh, on the bottom here, that's up in Inuvik. I was up there for the uh, Truth and Reconciliation National Event. So taking pictures of those are the Inuvik dancers, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And then uh, the top picture is, uh, I think it's from uh, the Suicide Prevention Day, if I, if I remember correctly. Uh, that's uh, the Inuvik Sivniksvit students uh, one year. Uh, doing performances and, and, and that sort of stuff, cultural events. And the uh, elder is David Sirkwak, a well-respected elder, and he's a uh, instrumental in bringing back the drum, the Inuit drum, the key load. So uh, <clears throat> I took some pictures for uh, of David for uh, McLean's one day. They asked me to take some pictures for of David, so I did that. So this is where everything starts to, to come into play, photojournalism, a starting point with art. Uh, other than that, I had no interest in, in, in being a... a photographer, even, even that word, I don't even like the photography word because I'm not a photographer per se. I'm not trained in that. Uh, I don't pretend to be a photographer. I just take a lot of pictures with my camera. So, John Tyriac on the left. This was during uh, uh, the Inuit Art Foundation when they were in Ottawa. They used to put off uh, meetings and cultural events and art events throughout the year. So this is John. At one of the events, I took a picture of John because uh, I think John is very, uh, one of the best uh, artists to come out of Labrador, for sure. And uh, I wanted to take a nice picture of him and he allowed me to do that. Uh, Mr. Budweiser, I met Mr. Budweiser in Merrickville one day. This is one of very early on when I started taking pictures out in the boat. Uh, Merrickville is a, is a little town outside of Ottawa, about 45 minutes, and it's a, it's a tourist town. 
a very, very nice town. Uh, but I missed her. I, I was standing there on the road one day, uh, and Mr. Budweiser was next to me, and we started talking, just out of the blue, talking. And he told me he was up in Labrador one time. He was like, what are you doing in Labrador? I think he was up in the military, I don't, if I remember correctly. I don't, this is a long time ago. So, so uh, he was telling me some experience about that. And I said, oh, can I take your picture? And uh, so I took his picture uh, just out of curiosity. And I, I, th I like the way it came out just because uh, uh, I think it, uh, his, his facial expressions and, uh, and his, his uh, features are, are quite nice to me. And he was quite, an, uh, quite a nice man anyway. But this is just, just uh, uh, some of the images I've taken over the years. Uh, I call these sort of unexpected because they came out really nice, <laughs> right? Some of them are really nice, others are not. Uh, but uh, uh, that's the way it is. But it gets back to the photo photojournalism and just going out and experiencing uh, 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 the camera in my hand and meeting people and getting their reactions. Some people don't like it. Uh, a lot of people don't like it actually. So. So they don't like to take their pictures. I had to have the pictures taken, so I respect that and uh, try and work around those uh, those uh, 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 protocols. I don't take a whole lot of pictures of children uh, because you you need permission if they're under sixteen, right? So I don't take a whole. I do have pictures throughout the years of children, but I don't post them very much because you need permission, and I just don't uh, think it's right without permission. But this gets back to photojournalism, me starting to uh, to look at photography as an artistic expression. Of course, I, I've always taken pictures uh, on family vacations and out, outings with my family and whatnot, uh, but, you know, very bad pictures. <laughs> Just a dad trying to be trying to be cool and take pictures, but uh, very bad at it. But uh, when I got a, a 35 mil, I uh, started to take it uh, a little bit more serious, seriously. And I took it a lot more seriously when I got a, a digital camera a few years after that. I managed to save up some money to get a, a camera and a digital. So I started doing digital uh, work and uh, the bulk of my work is digital. Actually, all of it's digital, to be honest with you. I do have a few uh, uh, 35 mil images, but they're not the best quality. But uh, <clears throat> uh, so I just uh, take a camera and, and go and shoot things. I take pictures of everything, more or less, just anything. If, I, if, it, if it itches me or not, I'll just take it just, just to, uh, to see what it's like. And, and as I mentioned, for that, that practicing, uh, uh, to keep my, uh, my uh, practice up. These images were part of a show that was done in two, I can't remember the year, 2000. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I want to say 16, 17, maybe I could be wrong on that. I don't remember. It was uh, Barry Ace. I don't know if you know Barry Ace, a well-known uh, Algonquin artist. He, he was part of a collective uh, where uh, he and a, a number of uh, indigenous and Métis artists had a collective. And uh, they asked me to take part in, in, in a project they were working on for a, a show called uh, Surveillance so surveillance is a show, surveillance show for a, a show in uh, New York, uh, Mile Five Gallery, I believe, down there. So uh, I got uh, my designer, my web designer, uh, created these for me in, in a poster format, and uh, this comes from the awareness series that I did a few years ago. So it was just an extension of that. Uh, those, those that project, and I wanted to look at the whole idea, the idea of surveillance other than the visual, if you see the, the cameras and everything else visually and those things, I wanted to point, show how the government uh, surveyed Inuit back in the day when they were, they developed this uh, Eskimo identification program back in the 40s, which ran into the, right up to the 70s. So it was a, a numbering system used to, to uh, name Inuit. They, they weren't, uh, they weren't, uh, uh, respected enough to use their name. So they, they derived a uh, numbering system. If you see E6205, well, that's uh, E is Easter and a six is the region. I think that's Pangatong, if I remember correctly, up around that area, Cumberland Sound. So I wanted to do, I wanted to show that uh, in this one, the poster format, that uh, we were known uh, before government and officials came up, we knew who we uh, Inuit were. 
uh, <clears throat> and the Eskimo, I didn't like the word Eskimo, so I cast it out and put any of it because Eskimo is not a word that describes uh, who we are. It's uh, from our culture. It's another cultural word defining who we are. So we were always known as Inuit, we used to people. And then on the other side, the names, we had names, uh, there were names before numbers, so I just wanted to highlight that. Labrador wasn't under this system uh, because we were under the British system up until 49, 1949, then we became a part of Newfoundland and Labrador, and even then the provincial government just didn't recognize indigenous people in Labrador, so. So we were never under a part of that system. And I'm still uncomfortable talking about it because I haven't experienced it. So, so I'm still a little apprehensive about talking about it at times. It's just because uh, it's, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, need to be respectful and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, just to, to, to acknowledge that. So uh, this, I try and find things that are, are, haven't been done before using photography within the realm of Inuit art. As you know, Inuit art hasn't, uh, is very, very focused on carving, printmaking, drawings, and those things. And photography, or what we know as photography, uh, uh, is just uh, starting to become known within the Inuit art world, I believe. And so I'm just trying to add to that. I was just trying to add to that over the last 10 years, maybe. I'm just trying to find things that I can work with within the realm of photography. It has its limits, of course, in terms of what you can do. Uh, I don't manipulate my, my images. I don't use Photoshop. I don't use uh, uh, light light or what do you call it, the light room. I don't use any of those. I just take pictures and if they're good enough to show, I'll show them. If not, I just won't show them. That's just the way it is. I've taken thousands of thousand pictures over the last 10 years, so so I have enough images to do three or four more projects uh, within within what I've captured over the over the last couple of years. But this is just an artistic expression trying to trying to be artistic, trying to trying to find my voice with as an artist. Uh, that's, I'm not a professional artist. I, I haven't been to school for art and that, but um, I just have an interest, took an interest in in photography, uh, taking pictures when I got a camera. So. These pictures are, 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 are around Ottawa. Uh, if you look the bird, the owl, the Upik, uh, they've been coming into Ottawa for the last, I don't know, I, I know for the last three, four years, uh, the snowy owls have been migrating south, even further down into the States as well, in places like Seattle and Boston. But they come to Ottawa now. So the last couple of years I've been taking, I've been out in the field taking pictures of the owl, seeing what I can do and what I can't do because it's, it's, it's relatively new in, in terms of a subject matter for me. So I, uh, I've been taking those uh, pictures over the last couple of years and I was just out the other day looking to see if they're back, but I think it's maybe a little too early yet for them to be down here, but who knows, right? They could be, I just haven't uh, done enough exploring yet. The middle one is called the seeking. That's, uh, I do a lot of ice shots. I love ice. I love, we're losing our ice. So we we're just talking about it. My cousin Jason here, we we're just talking about it. Back home, the ice is not forming. In Ottawa, the ice is not forming. Uh, the lakes are, are still open. Uh, so we're, we're losing our ice. And I've been photographing ice for the last three or four years, trying to, trying to come, trying, trying to, to develop a, a project out of it. And I, I've been working on it, a series of images uh, about ice. Uh, I love ice, I love the taste, I love the smell, I love the feel, I love the look of ice. But more importantly, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a statement on trying to show that we are uh, being affected by climate change, global warming, and the ice is melting. Uh, what's gonna to happen to us if it melts? What's gonna to happen to us in a city? What will happen to us? Where's the voice within that? Uh, who's talking about it? Uh, those sorts of things. But I, I take, I go and take pictures of ice every day if I can. I just love it. And this one here just reminded me of a figure, and I really like the cigarette butt behind it as well. There's a cigarette butt there, so so I took that uh, along the Ottawa River. The snowman, I take pictures of snowman too. I take my family out when they were young, uh, out around, just driving, just do something to do, walking around. And uh, this, this, this snowman uh, was just down, a snow person was just down the road from me, but I really like this grumpy looking face, so I call him grumpy snowman, <laughs> right? So, so that's why I took that. But it just, just 
out of practice, that's all, and out of, uh, out of an interest for ice and snow, those sorts of things. Uh, <clears throat> the snowy owl was interesting. I really liked that. I was thinking about making a blind and getting closer to them, but you have to respect the land that you're on. It's farmer's land, so you just can't go on the farmer's land without asking permission, right? So I've been thinking about doing a blind so we can get closer to him. He was about, that one was about uh, 300 feet from me with a zoom lens, so I'm hoping to do a blind if I can and creep up on him and take more pictures close up, but I don't know if I can. I'll have to uh, ask permission to go on land, right? So on the farm, on the farm land. So, so I don't know if I can do that yet. I was just taking pictures of ice over Christmas um, at a lake. Uh, my wife and I spent a couple of days at a, at a, at a, uh, out of town. And I was taking pictures of the ice as well as swans. I, I've been taking some pictures of swans over the last little while as well. Very interesting stuff. I really like nature. I, I, I find it interesting uh, just for uh, something new, something different, uh, and, and challenges you in terms of your ability as an artist in terms of what you can do, what you can take, and myself, and, and the quality that comes out of it. Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But I was taking a lot of pictures of swans over the holidays, and I got some really nice shots of them. Uh, the, uh, they're uh, vying to be the, uh, the top swan in the group. So, so I've got some pictures of that, which I haven't shared yet, one or two on Facebook. I mostly do sharing my, my work on Facebook. Even that's becoming challenging because I find Facebook is it's a little more uh, uh, commercial these days in terms of what's been on there. So, so uh, just looking at the limits of that as well. Towards a contemporary practice, what does that mean? I'd, like I said, I made it up myself, but you know, I live in Ottawa. I live in southern Canada. I don't live in my region. I don't live in, in, any, in, in, in any of the regions. I live in an urban setting. So, so I'm looking at that. What does it mean for me personally? Uh, what can I do to, to, to keep that practice going, if at all possible? So I take pictures of things that interest me or just things that uh, I feel that uh, it can be visually pleasing or resonates with the individuals or others. The one on the left, uh, I call that Iglac, which means window. This was in, uh, taken a few years ago at Winterlude. I was lined up at Winterlude uh, waiting to take pictures of the ice carvings and the sculptures that they do. So uh, I was waiting in line up and I saw this pit, this gentleman here, this carver uh, behind a big sheet of, of ice and uh, I really like the uh, the visual, especially the uh, the red blouse and the yellow coat. It really looked nice, and it came out pretty good. But at the time, I was reading a book on research uh, uh, academics going up into the Arctic way back in the turn of the century, and uh, and uh, looking, reading some uh, some uh, some uh, some research on on folks going up and doing research on Inuit in the north, and. Uh, it was always from within, in the context of within inside the igloo. So everything was, at the time I was reading, was inside the igloo. So just describing what was going on in the igloo and all that. So it, I was thinking about that at, uh, as I was lined up, and, and this is where that comes from. So I just wanted to, to take that idea and flip it around, that concept, and flip it around to, to my own personal view of, okay, I'm looking at you, I'm focused right on you right now. So the research aspect of it. The one on the right, I can't remember what I call this one, Dracula, I think. This was a couple of years ago, two summers ago, at, at, a, at a, a, a lake called Clear Lake, south of Ottawa, south of Smith Falls, actually. Uh, so this, this uh, heron, blue heron, has been uh, on this lake for many years, and uh, he's become very friendly with my, with my friends who own, who own the house that we we're at. And he just happened to uh, come on the dock, on the, on the dock that we were at. And he was there for uh, quite a while, just like just here to, to the end of the table. So I took a lot of pictures of that. And he left and he came back and he went along the shore, along the shoreline. So I, I got my camera on. I studied him for about three to four hours, just following him, taking pictures of him, because I wanted to see if I could take an actual picture of him hunting, because they are predators, right? So they hunt. So. Uh, so after three, four hours, I managed to capture this shot. And uh, I was quite, uh, quite pleased with how it came out, especially the, the drop of blood there. 
you see the drop of blood. I was quite surprised that I actually got that. So, so, um, <clears throat> so these are just some of the other things I take uh, has a, I have an interest. I'm also very big on concepts, conceptualization. I really like the idea of of conceptualization. I sit down and and uh, think about things, come up with concepts. Some work, some don't. Uh, but I'm very big on concept con conceptuation, so so I think that's the best way I can describe myself at times in terms of what I want to do, conceptualization, looking at concepts, looking at ideas, trying to build uh, build something out of that, a project out of that, or some kind of uh, a saying or some kind of image uh, through uh, conceptualization, and this gets back to some of the things I talked about earlier, especially the ice and con concepts of, of the ice and what it means, what it what it uh, means to us as a society, what it means to us as Inuit, because we are losing our ice, we're losing our way of life. It affects us uh, traditionally. Uh, uh, going out on the land, going out on the ice, it's it's an important part of our cultural activities. Uh, not for me these days, because I, don't, I live in Ottawa, so I don't go out on the ice much. I still have a fear of ice. But uh, but uh, it is it is affecting our our culture our our what we call Inuit Nunungak, the Inuit homeland. So it is affecting uh, all all things uh, uh, pertaining to uh, Inuit life and culture or traditions and practices and activities, whether it's family or individual hunters going out, family going out, family outings on the ice, traveling along the ice to get to your your camps or your summer ho uh, winter homes. Or, or your hunting grounds and those sorts of things. The public and the private. Uh, <clears throat> as I mentioned, I haven't been home in a long time. I haven't lived in Riglet for many, many years, as Jason knows. I left, my family left Riglet when, uh, I think in 67, I think, my parents moved to Happy Valley Goose Bay as part of the redevelopment program that was going on at the time. Shortly after that, my parents split up uh, we ended up in uh, what you call a residential school up here. We called them dormitories back home. So I spent five years in a dorm, more or less a residential school, right? So social services at the time, my, my parents, when my parents split up, uh, we ended up uh, in the dorm. Uh, I'm not quite sure because I was so young through social services, I guess. But uh, thinking about that uh, and uh, the Truth and Reconciliation, National Day of Truth and Reconciliation, this was taken uh, last year. Uh, last, the first Truth and Reconciliation Day over in Picton. I have a brother-in-law and a future uh, sister-in-law who live in Picton. So we were over there, we went over there to visit them and help them out uh, a bit because they were in the process of moving. So we went over there and we spent the day, uh, the first National uh, Truth and Reconciliation Day with them and we were out on the beach and I had my drum with me and I wanted to do a bit of drumming. I'm not a professional drummer, I do drum demonstrations. I, uh, I didn't grow up traditionally per se, uh, I grew up uh, very contemporary in very contemporary uh, uh, life. Uh, up in, especially in Happy Valley Goose Bay, I mean, it's very contemporary, right? So uh, at the time when I was growing up, I think there was about 15, 16,000 people living in Happy Valley Goose Bay, but it, since the population has since gone down since then. But here at the public and the private is me having some private thoughts on about my days in the, in the dorm um, and uh, trying to come to terms with that and trying to recognize and honor uh, what has happened and the life that I, I, I was going through at the time in the dorm. And I just wanted to do a little bit of a drum uh, sequence or in Picton for, uh, for myself and, and to honor Truth and Reconciliation Day. And just to have that dialogue, especially in Picton. Picton is like, okay, the colonialistic capital of Ontario type of thing. But it's just the way the history is, right? So going over there and being there, I think, uh, I think it was uh, fitting to, to do that, I think. And as, as I said, it's just going from a private to a public uh, uh, take on my art and my practice and, and just opening up about that. Biggest thing I have uh, to do is, is open up about art. I find it uh, to be very, uh, very vulnerable at times, uh, especially if you're new to the field. Just trying to uh, trying to lay your ground and trying to figure things out as I am. I'm still trying to figure things out in terms of where I want to go, how I want to uh, 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 build my practice, uh, 
uh, over the next few years. So I'm 61 years old, so I don't have too many years left. My eyes are okay for now, but uh, you know, getting up there in age, I have those, but I'm too fickle to wear them, Jason. <laughs> Same with hearing aids. I, don't, I have hearing aids, but I don't wear them. <laughs> uh, but uh, just trying to figure that out, where to go uh, in terms of doing this, doing this uh, art uh, practice in mind. I do it part-time. I do a practice is part-time. I do work full-time. Uh, so I do part-time practice with full-time thinking of art. I do think about art every day, all the time. I'm always thinking about art. What can I do, what I can't do, what are the limits, what can I work on, what ideas are there, how are people responding to that, uh, and uh, what what I can say, what I can uh, say in terms of uh, resonating with people, if it resonates with people whatsoever, right? But uh, 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 time will tell, I guess. So these are just a couple of drum shots I took. Um, actually, uh, I took uh, these, the one on the right is a picture, I think it's my wife's arm, and the one on the left is my future sister-in-law's uh, arm. So. So it was good for, uh, to be over there and to uh, be with my family on the first National uh, Truth and Reconciliation Day and just to try and uh, give a, a little bit of uh, credence to that day and, and respect it. These are the couple of images that I've been working on over the last little while. These are what I, these are from a project I called uh, Seaweed and Tweed. Seaweed and Tweed comes from the idea, the concept of, of uh, me, uh, especially in, on the island of Newfoundland, uh, not so much in Labrador, because I have been taking a lot of pictures in Labrador uh, just because I can't get there. The last time I was there was 2015, I think, and I took some images around Half Valley Goose Bay, Norquist River, and those sort of things. Um, these, are, these are things I find if you look at seaweed, seaweed refers to land, land wash land, the uh, the uh, the coast, uh, exploring the uh, the land, what we call land wash, the uh, the uh, beaches and, and the shores along the along the water along the along the coast. Um, so seaweed refers to that. Tweed refers to my time in 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 Ontario. If you look at if you look at Labrador, the landscape of Labrador, and, and compare and contrast that with, with uh, Ontario, I find Ontario to be very different, very green, a lot of different plants, a lot of different, uh, 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 different landscapes, different images, different things within the land, compare that with, with Labrador, I find it very different. So if, if you combine those two, seaweed and tweed, uh, this is that idea for that project, and I, I myself and uh, the Canadian artist Leslie Reed have been trying to do a, a project together over the last couple of years, and we finally have a proposal put into the Canada Council to do a show together, and this is my, my uh, contribution to that. These are images, anybody want to have a guess at what these are? These are images taken along the Rideau, Rideau Canal system. These are, if you look, at, if, I don't know if you've been to Ottawa and look at the uh, Rideau Canal. My wife and I look, uh, go to the canal uh, uh, every once in a while just to get away from the city and to enjoy nature and listen to the water and the sounds and, and the, 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 the scenes of, of the along the canal. These are, 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 are images taken from the canal where it's dead water. So this, it, it's uh, if you know the canal, sometimes they're there's, they're not being active. You have to open the open the locks to let boats in. These are some of these are some of the images that were captured at within the dead zone within within the still waters along the along, along the Rideau Canal. So if you look at the one on the left, that's actually foam. You know the foam you get on the water. I don't know what the right word for that is. Right, foam. Right, <laughs> sea foam, whatever. Right. So that's what that is. And then the one in the middle is just a bunch of leaves uh, collected, and uh, I really like the the uh, the, uh, the makeup of it, the uh, the texture, the uh, the uh, the colors, and the uh, the uh, elements within that. And the one on the right is the same thing; it's just a a, a close up of of foam on on the water. I find it very interesting. I find it very 
very interesting and uh, from a close-up perspective I find it nice and uh, pleasing to the eye and sometimes you get some really nice images out of it. These are, I have a working title for these, these are, I call these the Bytown, Bytown series or the Bytown, Bytown collection. And Colonel Bai who, who uh, created the, uh, who developed the, uh, the canal system, Colonel Bai. That's where that's comes from. But I'm also looking at the idea, uh, looking at the, the history of the canal, especially when it, we talk about the indigenous people along the canals and, and the, uh, the effects of, of that canal, what has happened to that. I'm still not, uh, I still got a lot of research to do, but, but I'm looking at that in that context as well, just to, just to uh, pay my respects to the, uh, the uh, Algonquin and Schneebeck people, and just to get a little understanding of the history behind that. But visually, I, I find it uh, quite interesting. And uh, sometimes it reminds me of, if you want to look at the one on, on the uh, left, it reminds me of, of seal fat <laughs> a little bit, just a little, little bit. Right, so so just getting back to some of the culture, some of the history of my own my own experiences, my own uh, knowledge or lack of knowledge, because I don't know a lot uh, about my own culture, even even uh, to this day, it's it's a uh, it's I'm still I'm always learning about that, my culture, my my heritage. Uh, as I said, I didn't grow uh, up traditionally; they're very contemporary, a little mixture of both, right? So. Just learning something, especially the language. I know we have a very distinct dialect back home in the Riglet, so I've got a booklet and I'm trying to learn uh, my language through that as well. The Riglet dialect, as well as uh, the Nazi root dialect, as well. And these are just some more images from that uh, that project I'm working on. Uh, uh, the one on the left, I I remember my brother Derek, who's a hunter, seal hunter. Uh, cleaning the seal one day and I was looking at him and I was watching him and uh, observing and trying to trying to learn and this is this reminded me of that where he was scraping this the fat off with the ulu and one of one of my buddies said that doesn't look like seal whatsoever I goes no it doesn't but it's a memory of that it's a memory of for that right so that's the memories that I've, I've, I have uh, uh, have throughout the years and just trying to trying to remember those trying to keep those fresh in my mind and uh, and uh, just sort of uh, exploring those those ideas and the one on the right is just another image of, of uh, those uh, uh, those uh, dead zones within the within the canal as I said we go a lot we go travel all over Ottawa the surrounding areas anywhere a two-hour radius around Ottawa mostly in the west of, west of Ottawa and a little bit north and south not so much east because uh, it's just I find the uh, uh, the west of Ottawa a little more uh, interesting and a little reminds me a little of Labrador as well. The landscapes, the the the, uh, the rocks and the trees and those sorts of things. Just you see some things that remind you of back home, going along in the boat and and, and uh, on a land and that sort of stuff. So it just reminds me of that at times. So these are just some images from, uh, these are taken, I think, around Torco, Bay Bulls area. Last time I was down there, to, out exploring that area, such a beautiful area. Along the shore, along the lines, there's seaweed and, and kelp and that. And just looking at that in terms of, of what's around, uh, just exploring the, the coastline and the shores and the land wash and seeing what's around, taking pictures, just, just practicing my skills. I'm just uh, trying to build up my skills and find things that are interesting to me that re reflects on my own history, my own experiences, and what I've seen, what I and uh, and what I've uh, done over the last well, since since uh, uh, I guess since I've been around, I guess for like a better word. And so these were just a couple of shots of some seaweed and uh, kelp along along the uh, shore. I just. Subject-wise, I just find it interesting. And if, does it work? May not, but that's okay. Uh, time will tell. But just exploring the ideas, the texture, the makeup, the taste, the smell, all those visual signs of 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 of, of looking at this and feeling and 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 uh, contemplating what you can do, what you can't do, those sorts of things. 
As I said, I like, I like ice. The one on the right, I call keelote keel uh, on ice. It, it's, it's a picture of a ice puddle along the Ottawa River, if I remember correctly. It just reminded me of an Inuit drum, that's all. The little, the little piece there. Also, also reminds me of a friend, uh, my dear friend, uh, my late uh, friend Ruby, who passed away a few years ago. Uh, she was in Baker Lake originally, and she loved, uh, like we used to do a lot of, have a lot of discussions and whatnot. And she loved uh, bubbles and ice like me. I literally love it, right? So I just took a picture of that. I'm always thinking, if I see bubbles and ice, it just reminds me of, of her and our conversations and, and that memory I have of her. The one on the, on the right is a image, I think it's called Community Collage, I think, if I remember correctly, but that's taking out Winterloo. Winterloot is our winter festival in Ottawa. It happens at the end of uh, January, uh, February. Now it's over three months in February uh, uh, in Ottawa because of the climate over there. A lot of times here are rained out, so I call it Waterloot at times. <laughs> but the, uh, this was in the, uh, when my kids were going to Winterloot with us, uh, we go down and explore and look for things and take in, take in the activities at Winterloot. And this was an ice park that was uh, put together uh, by the organizers of Winterloo, what it was is a, they had a whole lot of ice cubes, colored ice cubes, so the kids can play with them and build things and uh, create things out of the ice and put them on uh, clear ice like this. So I find it very interesting. I really loved how the, uh, the colors and the textures and the, uh, the, uh, the uh, form Formula, formulations of the ice, I've found it very interesting, really liked it. So I, I've taken a lot of images of those as well. I'm trying to work on a project called uh, Chubas. Chubas is a, just an idea I've had in terms of, uh, of, of uh, more images on about the ice and, uh, and taking more pictures of the ice and testing my limits of, of, of what can be done uh, on that subject. Chubas is a play on, on words, it's my, my late Cousin uh, Abby, uh, back in when I was in, in, in uh, Labrador, he used to call me Tuba as a nickname, and it changed to Chuba for some reason. So he used to call me Chuba. So that's where that comes from. I just want to to honor his memory, and 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 uh, and, uh, and I just came up with that word Chuba, just just to, to have a, a reference point on on the work I was doing with respect to these these ice blocks and these ice walls, and the activities uh, surrounding that at the Winter Dude. Well, like I said, ice, ice is very important. As I said, uh, we are losing our ice. So uh, I did another one called, uh, another one on ice called, uh, Where Are You Now, Bridget Bardo? And then what it was is, is I was up in Carlton Place. My wife and I was up uh, about an hour from Ottawa, Carlton Place along the uh, Madawaska River, I think, or the Mississippi River, I don't remember. And I saw a picture of a, a piece of ice and it looked like a bra, right? So it just the, this way of shape, it looked like a bra. So I took a picture of that and I was looking at ice. I was looking at the idea of climate change and the voices around that. And I call this one in particular called, where are you now, Bridget Bardot? Because if you remember Bridget Bardot and the, the effects that she had on the seal hunt way back in the seventies and eighties, I think, if I remember correctly it was, and voices around that and the, 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 the uh, hysteria and the hype and the and the uh, the uh, the people speaking about that. I I was looking at that and trying to figure is there that strong of a voice? If so, where is it and who's speaking on behalf of, of the idea of, of climate change, the global warming and what's going on. So so I, I just was looking at that and goes it's, that voice is not very loud at times. So and I was just uh, I just compare and contrast that with what happened. Um, uh, back in the day when the seal hunt was being uh, being uh, uh, affected by uh, 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 all these activists and uh, all these groups and that. So, so that's a little bit more on the ice itself. Can I use it as a, as a voice in action? Sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. The one on the left, I, I was walking along the uh, Ottawa River. There's a beach called Britannia Beach, and I was walking along the path there, and I saw a uh, a, a uh, cauldron. And uh, within, so I look, I was, oh, I wonder what's under the, in, the, in the cauldron. So I looked in it, and it was all full of ice. So it was all kinds of ice shapes like that on the left, right? 
So I found it very interesting because so I spent a, a good hour and a half taking pictures of, of the ice within that context and I have many, many others, right, as well. Uh, so, uh, and the other one, the uh, one in the middle, my original title for that was Do You See Jesus, right? But uh, when I was going up to Labrador to take part in a show that had Dr. Igloorty put together called uh, Ahayuk, I changed it to, uh, to uh, reflect my days in the dorm. So I call that uh, block memories, right? So a lot of block memories. Purposely, I have a lot of block memories from living, living in a dorm. So, so I changed that to, uh, to uh, block memories in respect to my, my time in the dorm. But I really like the idea of uh, do you see Jesus, <laughs> right? Uh, so, and the one on the right is a piece of ice along the uh, Ottawa River again. Uh, but it remind me, uh, if you look at the bottom half of it, it remind me of Labrador, a map of Labrador. So I call it the search of Labrador. So that's what that one's about. So just finding different things, I mean, in ice, if I can, if I can't. And so those are, are, are some of the things I, I call art as a voice in action. My voice, I can, I'm just adding to, uh, if we adding to that, uh, that dialogue. Mm, maybe, maybe not, but time will tell, as I say. An action, action, what can I do, what can I can't do? I mean, I'm not, I don't have, I don't speak a lot. My wife can contest to that. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not, not a big talker whatsoever. So I use, uh, use this as a voice, art as a voice, and I'm slowly breaking that mold, breaking that out of that cycle and trying to, trying to use my, my verbal voice more trying to promote uh, a voice in action through photography, if at all possible. Exploring ideas and options. Uh, I did a series called uh, on the NASIC, the hat. The NASIC, uh, if you look at the left, that's on the Rideau Canal. I went one down, went down one, uh, one day a few years ago when the Rideau Canal uh, Skateway just opened up and I was under one of the, the overpasses where the cars go over and there was a, I took all my NASACs with me, my hats, because I wanted to develop a project on, on the hats, the NASACs. So I have a lot of the NASACs. So I just wanted to try that, to explore ideas, to see what can work, what can't work in terms of Inuit realities within Ottawa and my own realities. Uh, I don't speak on, I don't speak for anyone. I don't represent anyone. Uh, I just do it myself. I'm a very individualistic person. I don't speak for anyone. I don't, uh, I don't uh, do those sorts of things. Just me, myself, exploring ideas and options. What can, what can be done? What can't be done? And so I did a whole bunch of pictures on, on the, the NASAC. Uh, individually, group-wise, uh, I even got somewhere. I had a hockey net, and I put them in 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 in, in the neck in the net. Uh, and uh, and the idea of of defense and uh, stopping the puck and all those things, right? Just for some fun. Some I try to put a lot of fun into my images as well. I like fun. I, I'm not a, a very serious person at times. I, I I like a lot of fun, a lot of humor, and so. The Ottawa and the uh, Montreal hat. I have a lot of fun with my buddy back home, who's a big Habs fan, and I'm not. I'm a, I was a Toronto fan at one time, but I turned to Ottawa because I live in Ottawa. So we have a lot of fun about that. And the image on the right is a uh, Matthew. I can't remember his last time. This was taken at uh, 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 Northern Lights two years ago, I believe, three years ago, last time they were in town. Matthew's from uh, Nain Yunatsuvud originally, I did not know that. And he was just starting to prepare uh, uh, to do a drum dance uh, with his, uh, his, uh, his partner. So I just took that picture uh, there. Uh, uh, Northern Lights is a big, uh, big event that happens in Ottawa every two years where they bring uh, uh, Inuit uh, businesses and, and uh, those sorts of things into Ottawa as well as a lot of cultural events, a lot of business and, uh, e uh, events, and a lot of cultural uh, shows, and a lot of, uh, lot of uh, business mingling, those sorts of stuff that every two years, and I think it's taking place again this year in February, I understand. And they invite artists to come in to sell their wares, as well as uh, organizations, uh, both uh, in the, in, well, mostly in the north, as well as businesses here in the south as well. I think it's, it's put off, I think, in conjunction with the Baffin, 
Chamber of Commerce and the Labrador Chamber of Commerce, I believe. Commerce, a conference, I believe. Commerce, I believe. So these are just some of the things I, I like to uh, explore, uh, take pictures of, and just to see what happens. Sometimes, a lot of times, things don't happen with them. I just uh, just take them because I'm interested in it, and I like I like taking pictures. It's fun. These are out and about pictures, just some images that I've taken over the last little while. The bees are is a play on my name, Pottle Bee. Uh, my friend Nancy used to call me Pottle Bee as part of my uh, email, and I just added a, another E on it too. So I call myself Pottle Bee because I love bees. I think bees are in danger as well. I love taking pictures of bees. I love to take them in action, and uh, I haven't been stung yet, so that's good. <laughs> they, they allow me to take Take their pictures, but it's it's. I'm trying to, I'm trying to develop my own business, uh, but it's very challenging to develop a business. And my idea is to call my business Pottle Bee Prints eventually. So I don't sell a lot of my work these days. I I think the last time I sold something was maybe a year and a half ago. So I, I definitely don't make a living at it. It's more of an interest. And the uh, the one on the right, I call it Cod Free. I was walking in. Uh, NCC has a bunch of paths in Ottawa, the National Capital Commission, they have a lot of hiking trails, a lot of paths. So this was uh, taken, uh, I think in the fall. Uh, in 2018, we had a tornado go through uh, Ottawa and we were affected by it as well. But our neighborhood was totally affected by it. And so this path is where the tornado came down and it just gutted uh, Arlington Woods, the area, one of the neighborhoods I live across from, I just gutted the trees, and we're talking trees at 100 years old and massive, massive trees, right? So this is just one of the images from that, and I call it codfish because it reminded me of codfish, right? So, and the one on the left is just a picture of uh, of uh, the lake I was at uh, over the uh, the Christmas, but this was this was taken in the summer. I had my wide angle lens on, and I really liked the uh, the uh, the, uh, the the uh, the uh, the, uh, the way the uh, the light and the uh, the sudden sun sunset was playing on the uh, on the water and the trees and the light so it just came out uh, quite well I think so so just a uh, just a uh, uh, take on that I call out and about just out and about taking pictures just out and about everywhere. Post-contemporary, that's a play on words. <laughs> I took this at a, a cemetery in Fallowfield, which is about 20 minutes from where I live in Nepean. And uh, so uh, I, I really like, uh, I like the, uh, the post itself. So I call it post-contemporary, right? I do have another one I took the other day of, a, of another fence, <laughs> which I'm gonna uh, call it my companion piece. But for me is, is what's next? Where do I go from here? If you look at the title of our talk um, uh, today, uh, Finding Ground, I'm still, if you look at it that way in my art practice, I'm still trying to find my ground, trying to find my foot within this whole realm of art history and Inuit art and art overall. Uh, I have a very multidisciplined uh, approach to art. Uh, that goes back to my 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 uh, university days. I took a Aboriginal studies course, a degree in Aboriginal to be in Aboriginal studies. What it was at the time was uh, an interdisciplinary uh, program. I had to choose my own path. I, and that means choose my own courses that were the the way to the program was laid out, you pick and choose courses that were indigenous, aboriginal at the time, um, led or themed. And I have to build my, my program on that. So uh, at the time, when I was going to university, Carleton cut a lot of art history courses and a lot of art courses because they wanted to focus on technology. And at the time, in the early 90s, uh, uh, Ottawa is a hotbed for technology and, and what they call it, Silicon North, I think they call it. Right, so Carleton was focusing on that and they cut a lot of courses. So I ended up doing a lot of art history courses. I think a lot of my credits are art history related. So this is where the interest in art comes from as well. Uh, both Inuit 
indigenous Métis and overall art history, uh, the world of art history, whether it's Canadian, whether it's European, American or whatever, right? So, so that's where that interest comes as well, <clears throat> through through art history, through taking courses and and and, uh, and learning uh, the uh, the culture and the history of art uh, in Canada. So where do I go from here? What can I do? It's very challenging. I don't know. I mean, you know, what's contemporary? Uh, what's post-contemporary? <laughs> I don't know, right? Maybe I'm just just grasping at straws. But what's next? Where do I go from here? I, I, not so much, I, I, I like, my interests are varied. I, I don't like to be just focused on one thing. I like to be like this. I like to explore the world. This is why I left Labrador as well, because I wanted to explore the world. Um, back in the 70s when I was growing up, a lot of influences uh, on me were, number one is David Bowie, of course, New York City, <laughs> right? Uh, Toronto, uh, Montreal, of course as well as uh, another a uh, few other uh, major cities but living in half valley of goose bay uh in the 70s 80s i always thought about the out outside world exploring it and uh and uh, living in that so this is one of the main reasons why i left uh, labrador other than the fact that i couldn't get a uh, i signed up for the military when i was in in, in the labrador and so after moving out of labrador to st john so i joined the military and this is how i got to to be in Ontario. I joined the military and ended up in Kingston for a little bit. Uh, didn't work out, it wasn't a life for me or them, but that's okay, that's the way it is. So I've experienced that. Um, but here is what's next, what, what can I do? Where can I bring this? Uh, what can I say in terms of, of the, the con continued work and, and the images that I produced? Is it relevant? I hope so. Does it resonate with people? Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, uh, is it successful uh, to a certain degree? Uh, like I said, I don't sell a lot of work. That's fine. I'm not into to making money per se. Uh, I, it's more of an interest and more of a uh, 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 trying to develop a practice. Uh, I've, like I said, I've always had an artistic mind. I just didn't bring it out uh until i picked up a camera in, in back in 2000 i don't can't remember seven eight somewhere around there so where do we go from here i try and continue to do what i'm doing uh, i got a couple of projects uh, hoping to work on uh but it's very expensive printing is very expensive a uh, hundred dollars a shot I, I just can't afford it <laughs> i've been trying to save up money to work on a I, i've been trying to work on a proposal where I'm trying to uh, have 10 works of my uh, ice images uh, selected for a proposal. And uh, I've been looking at printing them on uh, aluminum, but this is very expensive. So, you know, I got to try and figure out where we get money for that as well. But, but that's, that's the way it is, right? It, art is expensive. Art is, it can be expensive. Uh, if you don't make a lot of money on it, you have to wait, you have to bide your time and do what you can. In my, in my instance, do what you can, when you can and how you can. Uh, but I promote my work through uh, Facebook mostly and through word of mouth. And uh, I look at uh, what's out there, who's looking for proposals, who's looking for calls, for submissions. And I, I, I try and track those and, and try and uh, uh, put in proposals when I can, and if I can, uh, most of the times they're rejected, but that's okay. I'm fine with rejection. I've got used to it now. <laughs> it's not, it's not the, the most biggest thing, but uh, it's just the way it is, working in a, in a part-time art practice. Full-time, I don't think I'd, I'd survive full-time. It's just the way it is uh, in terms of uh, trying to do uh, what I'm trying to do uh, with the means I have. Uh, and the uh, constraints and the uh, the uh, the uh, ability to do uh, uh, work within that context. I don't know. Go from here. Uh, I do have a few more projects in mind, but after that, I'm not quite sure. Like I said, I'm I'm getting up there in age. My my vision is still good, but who knows, right? <laughs> who knows what's going to happen. That's it, Taima. That's it for me.
does anyone in the audience or online have any questions? If you are online and you have a question, please feel free to turn on your camera, unmute yourselves, or pop a question in the chat. And if you're here in the space, just raise your hand. A cannon. <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> a cannon. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Oh, oh he heard me anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. oh, what kind of camera do you use? A Canon. I have a Canon 90, which, oh, okay. I, which I spent 10 years saving up for. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I always had camera. I have always had a Canon. That's what, that's what Zellers had to offer when at the time. I tried Nikon, but Nikon, I found it wasn't too comfortable in my hands. I found Canon a little more, a little more comfortable. But I like Nikon as well. I really like the sharpness of Nikon. So, you know, who knows? I may get one in the future. I don't know. Can, cameras are very expensive, as you know, right? <laughs> right? So, yeah. I do have my original camera was a Canon. It was a uh, uh, XTI, XT. So with uh, 10 megapixels, I think. So very limited in terms of what I can do in printing wise. My older images, so I, I can only print up to. I think 22 or 24 because of the limits with that camera. Then I got a, uh, a 7D, which is a little more, which is more advanced and the, uh, the pixels are much better and I can print larger. And now I have the 90 camera. So I, I, I can, uh, I'm looking at pretty large format as well. I call it, especially with my ice images, I, I've been working on a project called uh, pan mirror. Pan mirror is a play on words, so ice pans and mirror, double mirror, ice, double ice, right? So is that play on 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 ice? And I, I've, I'm hoping to do large scale uh, uh, for uh, prints yet, but who knows? It's just the limits within my my uh, my camera, right? Thanks, thanks for your talk. Um, I'm just wondering about the, the Inuit tag series. Um, can you tell me, I'm, I'm sorry, and I should know this, but mm. where, do people have, still have the tags or where did you source? Yes, uh, uh, people have the tags. I, uh, the, the idea behind uh, the uh, uh, Eskimo identific identification uh, system or the awareness series, or which I called it in the end, it came about, uh, I was at home reading a, an article uh, in the Nazi news about a young student doing a project on the, on the e, e numbers. And I looked at it and I goes, can I do that using photography? What can I do with that? So I started asking my fellow community members in Ottawa if they had their takes or uh, do, they, do they still use them or do they know the numbers and that? And uh, a lot of people said no. So some knew the numbers, some didn't. And a lot of people uh, just didn't want to talk about it. But I ran into my friend Reepa Eva Carlton. She lent me her, it was a family uh, uh, tags, there was eight of them. So she graciously me allowed to photograph them over a year. I don't think she was too happy with me uh, having them for a year, but that's the way it was. I, I, I uh, photographed them in many different lighting, different settings, uh, different uh, textures and different uh, backgrounds and, and it came out, uh, a final uh, product was, a, a, I put them on a manila envelope, which is, they really stood out like that. But so I, I borrowed them, uh, those tags from her and I photographed them. Then I wanted to put a face to that that project. So I started asking other community members and other Inuit, do you, would you want to be part of this project? Can I photograph you? Because I wanted to put a face to that. So the tags are, are not the images that are, they don't belong to the owners of the, the portraits within that series. There's nine of them. They are reapers and their families. And the, the uh, portraits are just people I asked to take uh, part in this project. And they graciously said that, uh, yes. So, but it, what it was, it, it, it was an identification system. It was developed back in the 40s through a medical uh, model using a number of systems. So it's a precursor to, from what I was told, uh, SIN numbers. So what it was is a numbering system. You were given a number by a government official, RCMP, you as a, you know, you can only use this number, E6205. That's your identity now. You cannot use anything other than that to identify when you, when we are, uh, doing senses and that sort of stuff right so that's where that comes that 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 history of that and there's a there's a, a book by barry a roberts uh he wrote a, a history of the uh 
the uh, disk system as well, if you want to find out more information on it. Uh, my idea was to photograph them and then do a uh, do stories to take the especially Rebus family is to do interview them and do uh, do the stories, but I just haven't got that far and I don't know if I'm the right person to do that because I was never under that system, so I, I want to respect that as well, and I find at times I'm not too comfortable in that that realm that aspect being just a uh, just a, a, a nobody right so so take that and respect that as well. In terms of the tag, in terms, I haven't always never under that system. I I have a number like in the military can equate to that kind of pro, uh, program or uh, that kind of example or that kind of uh, history that took place within the inner world. And I'm certainly not uh, comparing myself. That I'm just trying to explain that a little to you. That's a little better. Hopefully, that was helpful. Hi, we actually have a question online from Martin Loft, and he's asking, does he shoot digitally? So Barry, do you shoot digitally? How about black and white? And what do you think about historical pictures of Inuit? Uh, yes, exclusive digitally, I just all digital. Uh, I tried uh, film, but I find it very challenging. And uh, my lack of experience, I, I just wasn't very good at it. And I just leave that to, to the professionals. Same as commercial, I don't do commercial, I leave it to the professionals. These people are, are, are doing that as, a, as their, their business and whatnot, right? Uh, I do black and white, yes, I've been looking at black and white a little more, uh, but I, finding, I find uh, my strength is in color because I just can't find, sometimes I get it right with black and white, uh, but a lot of times I don't, but I'm exploring that as well. Uh, historic pictures of Inuit, that's where I come in a little different because I'm, this is live, we're living this history. I'm an Inuk, I'm taking pictures of an Inuk. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not dressing it up, I'm not pretending to ask you to do something different other than what you are, right? So, so in that context, it's more of a living history. It's, it's, in your, it's, it's happening now as opposed to, to somebody uh, doing a mock-up or asking you to dress up in any with costumes or costumes, excuse me, any with the uh, any with the uh, clothing or in any with settings or whatever. It's just in Ottawa, I'm there, you're there. So I take a picture of you on to respect that. Uh, so to me, I look at it a little differently. I'm I'm part of the culture and part of the community or lately I come also I, Lately, that's not necessarily true because of COVID and everything else. I call myself Barry Pottle, INP, Inuk non-practicing. Because non <laughs> I don't, I've, I live in Ottawa, Ottawa is a huge community, but I live in, in, in West Ottawa, so there's not a, not a lot of Inuit around me. There are some, but, uh, but in my practices, I don't practice it a lot in my daily life, although I try to speak my language, try and get some food when I can, but that's very really challenging. So I call myself INP, you know, non-practicing these days, because I want to respect that as well. I, I've been sort of disconnected from my community over the last couple of years, right for so with COVID and everything else going on in the, in the world and in society. Um, but uh, historically, historic pictures, some are nice. I really like uh, Peter Pitzelak's work. Historically, I think he's, he did some really interesting work. Peter Pisolak was uh, probably the first of what we call photographer, Enoch photographer, and he's one of my, my inspirations for doing this as well. But he took a lot of images of Inuit, uh, both, I think, stage at one point and others, right? So, so I look at that and I look at his work and uh, I try and, and, and respect history and respect the fact that I am here in front of you and it should be presented that way. So I was talking to my friend the other day, uh, there were some photographers back in the day, I think Notman and Eastman and all those, I think they used to mock up images, you know, snow, especially snow. You, I remember seeing when I was in school, seeing images of photographers and they'd paint white on a window to look like, represent snow. So. Last week or the week before, when I was uh, when it rained in Ottawa and freezing rain, and it just covered my 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 patio screen. I took a picture of the screen. I called it screensaver, just for that fact alone, because I know some pictures back in the day were were doctored and people were 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 uh, were uh, 
I guess, making things up for lack of a better word in terms of pictures and that. So, so that was, I look at that as well in, in, terms of, or in terms of what I'm doing and how I'm doing and look at the uh, historical aspect of, of photography as well. I don't have a strong grasp of the history of photography uh, throughout the world, throughout Canada and whatnot, but I have a little bit of knowledge on it. So these are the, some, some of the things I think about when I, when I take pictures, when I, when I uh, uh, look at the idea of, of what I want to do in terms of photography and the, uh, the projects I want to work, work on and the images I want to take. Sometimes they're, 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 uh, it's conceived beforehand, a lot of times they're not. I just go out and take pictures, see what I can see, see what I can take uh, and uh, the limits around that. Nighttime. I don't do nighttime photography. I'm really horrible at it. <laughs> I've been trying to do trying to do it for ten years, but uh, no, I don't do nighttime. Uh, it's very challenging. So I, I know my limits. Uh, I, I don't do a lot of landscape as well because I find I'm not very good at landscape images. I find close-ups are better. I have a lot of better eye for for close-ups than that. Okay. Thank you. No other? Uh, I hope you get the money for the shooting the ice pictures. Hopefully, yeah. The, the, that I, series of ice yeah. images, have, yeah. it would be really fantastic yeah. to see. I have all a bit together. of money saved up. I, I, it's called my print fund, right? I, I don't get a lot of money. But I, most of my money comes from like uh, uh, reproductions and, yeah. and fees and that sort of stuff, right? Canada Council grants. Not really, uh, no, sometimes, but I don't, okay. I don't really, I haven't really explored Canada Council yet for some reason, okay. I don't know. I, I just, I find it very challenging It's to a do. big organization. Yeah, plus, plus doing applications and I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather not do it to be honest with you. Get, get a cousin to help you. <laughs> It's, it's beautiful. No, but it's, it, it's a hit and miss, right? I mean, when you look at, when you, when you do proposals, it's a hit and miss. Uh, sometimes you get it right, sometimes you don't. Uh, uh, sometimes, a lot of times, you are rejected, but that's fine, you know. My, my goal has always been to be viewed, right? So if I put a submission out, my goal is to be viewed. My objective is to be viewed. Whether I'm selected or not, that's a, that's a bonus, right? That's really, really, really uh, good. And that means I could do something, uh, work on something uh, uh, in, uh, within that context. But uh, yeah, proposal writing and applications, I'm still uh, working around those. It's about the language. It's about what you use and how you do it, right? As you know. <laughs> now, I did put one in. I did. I got rejected there. I don't want to say who it was, but I did put the ice image of the keel out, the drum. I did put one in. I did put it in not too long ago, but it was rejected. That's okay, but I want to be viewed. That's the point is to be viewed, right? Because it's new. I mean, if you look at contemporary urban photography, I mean, who's doing any with urban photography? I noticed Catherine Tuckpani in Ottawa. She was a very successful, great, great artist. True, true, uh, truly uh, wonderful work that she does. Other than that, I don't know who else is doing in the context. In when we talk about urban, this is why I made up the word urban, contemporary urban. Photography. I don't know what else to call it. <laughs> and we also has a better name. Let me know, and I'll, I'll credit you for it. <laughs> Jason, you got to ask the question, Jason. <laughs> I put you on the spot, Jason. Jason's my cousin, so. <laughs> I have to use this thing, I guess. Uh, so, uh, when do you want to work together? Sorry? When do you want to work together on a project? When you're ready. All right. I'll send you an email tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. We've been trying to do something for a while, eh, Jason? I really like Jason's work. I just purchased a piece from him not too long ago. It's polar bear. Oh, I love it. It's so nice. It's still rolled up in my tube, though. <laughs> We're doing renovations in my house, so I, all of my pictures are off, off the walls, off my walls, right? But I really like your work, Jason. You do some really nice stuff. And yes, I still want to do a project with you for sure. It's just a matter of getting together and, and working on something. Yeah, the COVID. So there, yeah. there's another comment from Martin saying, "Excellent presentation. Keep trying to submit grants. Many are rejected on their first or even second tries. That's so true." So, Thank you, Martin. I appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, no, I haven't given up on it. It's just, you know, it takes a lot of time. Applications and proposals takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of energy. 
And uh, when you're doing it part time, you don't have a lot of time to do it, right? So, but no, I, I see things that I want to do and, and, and explore and, and submit to, but it's just a matter of time. Mm -hmm. I'm not too stressed out about not doing it because I'm still trying to develop my practice, whatever that is, right? So, so I've been doing this for maybe 10 years, maybe, or maybe when uh, Decolonize Me was, was uh, developed, I think 2011, Dr. Edelorty put that together. I think that's when I really started to focus on art as a practice and art as a, a means of, of, say, of saying something or producing something. So it's only been what, 10 years, 11 years? They say it takes 10 years to get established in photography. I don't know if that's true or not, I just read it, right? Right, but uh, it, it well works, <laughs> it's been a long time. It's good news for all the photography students out there. <laughs> Sorry, what was that? Good news for all the photography students out there. <laughs> yes, yeah, it does work. I mean, yeah, it does work. You know, you gotta, you gotta pursue it. You gotta be, have a passion and you have a, a sense of purpose to do it. Cause uh, I think I still have that. I still like it. Uh, I still take my camera. I should have took it today, but I knew it was going to be, uh, um, um, in and out, so I didn't really bother taking it today, but I'm looking at the industrialization as well. I'm interested in, in industry and, and foundations and factories, and uh, I want to take images as that as well, industry, industrial uh, yards, and that. Hamilton is a really nice place for that. I'd like to go back to Hamilton to do that. Lots of old buildings. I like architecture. I love the old buildings. I like the architecture. I like taking pictures of architecture and buildings on that. Uh, but uh, who knows where it's going to go. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you, Pedro. Thank you, everybody here at the fourth space. It's a nice spot, nice space. I could see some art in here. <laughs> Need a project? <laughs> I'm just joking. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everybody online. Thank you so much, Barry. And uh, let me just spotlight myself here. Thanks to all of you. I'm seeing like uh, people clapping on the Zoom. Uh, so thanks very much for joining us in that space. And for those of you who made it here in person, we appreciate you making the time in your calendars to come in and uh, listen to Barry's presentation, which was wonderful. So until next time, I'm just reminding you that if you wanted to share this event, this presentation uh, with any of your colleagues, the uh, video is already available on our YouTube channel. So you can just look up Concordia University's fourth YouTube? space on YouTube and uh, you'll find us there. Yeah. All right, folks, we're going to close up now and we look forward to seeing you again, hopefully soon. Thanks, everybody. Have a great evening. Bye.